Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Property Focus. Now, in today's episode, we're looking at property that's actually depreciating in value by 11% per annum for an asset that's supposed to be appreciating every year. What is causing this decline? This is Property Focus. We're looking at uncontrolled developments and a stellar example of an association that's trying to combat this. Welcome to the show. My name is Pete Ngigi. Let's get it in. Super, wonderful guys. Now, we're here with Mijida and she's going to demystify to us, first of all, what is zoning and what are the implications. Welcome to Property Focus. Thank you so much, Peter. Brilliant. Tell us about yourself. Well, my name is Mijide Kemoli and I'm a multidisciplinary designer. Okay, what, what does that mean? Oh, what does that mean? <laughs> so I work in different spaces within design. I'm an illustrator by profession, yes. but I work in the visual storytelling space, in the human-centered design space. So that's how I ended up working on this project with KPF. Okay, so, so tell us about this zoning then. Okay, yes. um, well, as many people I'm sure may not be aware, um, in an area like Kilimani, Lavington, Kilalashwa, under the zoning guidelines, the structures that are erected are meant to be ground plus four maximum. But unfortunately, when we look at the developments that are popping up in all corners of these high-end suburbs, a lot of them don't comply with those zoning guidelines, which is very unfortunate. And as a result of that, we are seeing a decline in the value of properties in a lot of these high-end suburbs. And the decline is going as low as 11%. Wow. Yeah. Per 11. annum. That's between 2018 to 2022. The value has dropped by that much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but then now you have areas like Modaiga where they've been able to retain their value because of strict zoning guidelines and adherence to building codes. So aside from the zoning regulations that have been able to allow areas like Modaiga to retain their value, in other residences where we've seen a drop, a lot of this is attributed to um, like what we've seen in the Likoni Lane uh, example where there was damage of the roads, damage of the pavements, you have um, a high population density in the area, um, security issues that are also posed due to that, um, heavy traffic and a general decline in what the neighborhoods used to be yes. from a couple of years ago. So given these issues, we conducted a social site assessment where we had the resident come together and fill in the forms and allow us to also have a feel of what their experience is like and some of the issues that they have if a high impact development were to be built in their area. And some of the issues that were highlighted were issues to do with um, security, people were feared for the safety of their children, when a high influx of unknown people come into the neighborhood and a neighborhood that was generally low density and safe for people to walk around. Um, there was the issue of sewerage because of a population booming by 5, 10, 20 times the initial number. Um, lack of water supply because in a lot of these areas they're already experiencing a water shortage. So how will those issues be addressed? And you had a lots of litany of just people signing and saying these are the problems and I think we have them right over here yeah. on the screen. So these are comments that residents have given out here that you presented to everybody. Yes. Amazing. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. So we got quite a lot of feedback and even from um, online platforms like WhatsApp, we were able to also get some insight on, on some of the complaints that people have filed from everything to do with electricity supply to water supply, sewers bursting, um, what they refer to as ladies of the night uh, starting to appear in the neighborhood, noise from clubs and such. So there have really been a lot of issues experienced by the residents. So you believe this is something that we should totally oppose? I do. I feel um, if we don't take action now, especially given um, the what we're witnessing mm -hmm. with the unplanned developments, there's no proper adherence to the laws that have been put in place. 
and I feel if we don't act now, then we may end up paying for it later. Amazing. Okay. Brilliant. There you had it. Thank you for coming onto the show. Thank you for having me. Absolutely amazing. Brilliant. There you had it from me, Jide. So we're going to cross over and talk to another urban planner about the sea. Brilliant. Now let's find out from Peter about the Likoni Lane area. Welcome to Property Focus. Thank you, Peter. How are you doing? Brilliant, brilliant. Briefly introduce yourself. Uh, so I'm Peter Omondi Onono, mm -hmm. an urban designer yeah. and I'm an urban planner. Amazing, amazing. Tell me what the situation is like over here. So uh, in the Likoni area, we had a situation where a developer was proposing to put up uh, three 15-story um, apartments in an area that is uh, widely low density. So uh, that's why my teammate and I came together to kind of highlight these issues that uh, Likoni Lane uh, residents would go through if such development would uh, be put up, as well as other issues that Kilimani residents at large are facing through such developments. Um, so our study, first of all, uh, focused on analyzing development trends for the past uh, 20 years, that is dating back to 2003. Uh, we were able to review development trends, issues to do with zoning, issues to do with uh, plot coverage, vegetatory cover uh, since 2003 uh, up to 2023. And what we noticed is uh, the integrity of the area pretty much remains the same. Uh, that is from 203 to 208. But now beginning 2008, we see a high spike in such uh, high impact developments. Uh, what does that mean in our area? There's decrease in forest cover, there's increase in population in an area that is, I'd say, primarily suited for low density developments. We have issues to do with uh, power outages, there's water outages, and uh, just general social degradation of the area itself. And uh, based on that analysis, we wanted to zoom into now the Likonile neighborhood uh, as it stands. Uh, what we started by doing is also uh, borrowing the building plans that the developer had uh, had submitted to us and we came up with uh, I'd say a 3D model of the proposed development itself and what we noticed is whatever the developer had had, had provided in the building plans and um, according to our own calculations as professionals as urban designers and uh, just professionals in the built environment space we noticed that um, these figures, what, whatever they were purporting to develop, was actually uh, not in accordance to what they had presented. Uh, so we came up with our own 3D model, we masked the area to bring out these scenarios, and we now started uh, briefly building a comparative analysis of what, is, what exists in the area as it stands, as well as uh, how the area will change over time with such developments. So those are the challenges that we are able to bring to light and to present to the residents and to the developer themselves. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, well done. Very well presented as well. Thank you very much for coming onto the show. Thank you for having me. Brilliant, brilliant. Now we go on to our next guest to find out a little bit more about what you can do as an association in your residency. So, architect Irene, where does the back stop or where is the problem? Who's to blame? I think we may not want to point fingers because there's a whole host of, of, of people that could easily take the blame, starting from the developers themselves, going down to the professionals, going down to the county government. But really, where the problem starts is that we, this is a country that has laws. This is not a banana republic. We have zoning, uh, zoning guide in place. And uh, much as it is under review, it is a legal document and it c very clearly outlines mm -hmm. what uh, Nairobi is divided into uh, several zones. Mm -hmm. It very clearly defines mm -hmm. what densities are allowed in which zones. Mm -hmm. Now, with all these developments that are coming up, specifically Kilimani, Kileleshwa, Lovington, which generally, Kilimani itself is in zone four. Mm -hmm. And zone four is clearly marked as maximum of four floors. Okay. And a ground coverage zone of three, 35. Three floors, zone two, two floors? Zone no, 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 no. Uh -huh. uh, just basically, there's a okay. nomenclature, there's a yes. naming system, but okay. Kilimani falls under zone four. Okay. And, uh, um, and I think Kilimani also falls under, under zone four. Okay. And the maximum allowed, number mm -hmm. of floors allowed mm -hmm. at the moment mm -hmm. is four. Mm -hmm. um, that seems to have been 
that seems to have gone out of the window a long time ago. Okay. Because right now you're seeing developments are up to 18. Yes. 20 floors. Mm -hmm. I think there's a development in Kileleshwa that's gone up to 25. Mm -hmm. And yet, there is no legal backing for that. Mm -hmm. In fact, yes. the argument that comes from the county government when questioned is mm -hmm. that there is precedence. Mm -hmm. Meaning that if a development was allowed, yes. say, five years ago, ah. in the vicinity, mm. so anything goes. Mm. So we, are, we seem to be uh, actually going at a very, mm. very screeching towards, mm -hmm. actually with one foot on, on, the, on, on a banana peel mm -hmm. and the other one towards the grave, mm -hmm. towards anarchy in mm -hmm. terms of these developments. Interesting. But you're a member of uh, KPF, Kilimani Project Foundation. Yes, I am. Tell us about some of the initiatives that you're taking on. <laughs> <laughs> there are many and varied. Yes. There are very many and varied. There's mm -hmm. a lot of uh, developments that have been proposed in places that they shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. KPF has been very, very robust yes. in ensuring that mm -hmm. any time any of these proposals come forward, yes. an objection letter mm -hmm. is presented to the county government. Mm -hmm. And this started way back, even mm -hmm. when we had the NMS, mm -hmm. even before the NMS mm -hmm. came on board. Mm -hmm. There's a whole file of objections mm -hmm. by the KPF. Yes. Where residents have complained, we cannot have this. We as residents are very well aware mm -hmm. of the capacity mm -hmm. of the infrastructure yes. that we, in places where we live. Mm -hmm. There are places, places like Wood Avenue. People have not seen water, running water, for up to eight years. And yet they are supposed to be living in a leafy suburb. Mm. So um, what gives mm -hmm. is the question we are all asking. Interesting. Yes, so um, Interesting. what you see now as KPF activism, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I mean, towards this uncontrolled, because they are uncontrolled developments. Mm -hmm. I can assure you that if the county government was to give us data on how many developments they have approved in the f past five years, mm -hmm. all of them high impact. And when mm -hmm. I talk about high impact, mm -hmm. I'm talking about anything that is above four floors. Yes. These high impact developments. They're numerous mm -hmm. and they're completely under control. I mean, out of control. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you very much, Architect Ayu. Yes. Thank you very much for coming on to Property Focus. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Brilliant, yes, brilliant, okay. brilliant. Yes. There you have it from Architect Irene. Now, we need to find out more and what KPF is doing towards this initiative. Let's shift over to our next guest. <laughs> Wonderful. Welcome to Property Focus. Thank you so much for having me. Briefly introduce yourself. Well, my name is Cindy Mwenba. Yes. I am a HR uh, professional, human resource uh, management professional, and I'm also a hospitality uh, specialist. Um, I'm also a resident of Dagoretti North, specifically a resident of Kilimani Ward. And I have lived here, what, 20 years, owned property here. Um, and I love being part of this community. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Now, there's a common word that has been thrown around throughout the interview, um, zoning. Could you kindly demystify that a bit further? Right. So zoning is um, where the county or the government that is in charge um, sections out um, areas that are meant for specific places. You cannot build, for example, uh, an apartment block or a house within what we call the manufacturing uh, so zone. Yes. So you cannot build an apartment inside uh, the manufacturing zone, which is industrial area. That is really meant for industrial, you know, industrial work. Yes. Whether it's manufacturing, whether it's a factory, whether, you know, that's what it's used for. And so each area has a particular zone and they are low density, you know, mid density and then high density. High density, for example, when you go to Embakasi, they're allowed to build, you know, uh, much smaller rooms, much, you know, much higher buildings with, you know, floors up to, I'm not sure exactly what number. Now, Kilimani falls under the, the middle, you know, the, the medium density. And the laws are clear four floors maximum. The other thing is that within that zoning, the, you know, the zoning law, um, you're supposed to have a amount of coverage within any plot. 
that plot, whether it is a one acre, two acres, you know, a quarter acre, 10 by 50, whatever mm. it is, yes. it is a quarter to three quarters, meaning that you build on a quarter and three quarters must be left unbuilt on. Which is not the case today. Which is not the case. It's yes. usually the other way around, which is very bad. But again, you see, inter legally speaking, a president has been set. But that president was based on, a, on either wrong um, approvals, wrong interpretation, and it doesn't mean that a wrong that was done and that was undertaken, that we should therefore then continue with it. That's what zoning is about. Mm -hmm. So legally, how can we address this problem? The thing is that, um, and, and I don't want to base my discussion so much on developers or those who are legally bound to approve or disapprove. I want to talk about what is the role of a resident? What is the role of the person living within that community? Mm -hmm. The law says that there must be public participation and they list it out clearly. So when a developer wants to do change of use, then they need to put a notice board first at that plot saying we are planning on, we are making an application for, and it needs to be either in English or in Kiswahili or the language that is spoken within that area. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you're in some other area and you know that Kisi is the, is the language that is spoken, then it needs to be English, Kiswahili and Kisi and it needs to be visible. So writing it in Chinese or yes. writing it in, in another term, term, French, because the developer is French, this, this is not going to work. It also needs not just to be put on the plot, it needs to be put around. So anybody who lives perhaps on that street, on that lane, along that avenue, you know, they need to say, okay, where are the strategic places for us to put this notice? So that we yes. inform people that we want to, we have the intention to, we want to change you know, to change use and call for people to actually give their opinion. And that's how you engage public participation. Now, a lot of times, I don't know, maybe we are still not yet used to the fact that we have a right, a citizen, to agree or disagree with whether it is a law, whether it is a building, it doesn't matter what it is. We have a voice because it is, the government is working for us. We put them there they, and they work for us and not against us. It's the same thing with the police. Mm -hmm. and therefore, people need to understand that they need to give their views and not when the building is up to say, well, it's 20 floors, we don't have water, the sewer pipes are burned, uh, you know, are bursting, etc. And this is where I try to get, you know, my fellow Kenyans, guys, you need to say something. You must say something. You know, are you okay with this uh, change of use? Mm -hmm. Are you okay with this proposed, you know, development? But I think also developers have a role to play. And those who we put in power have a role to play. That they need to ask, is this the right thing? Do we want to change this low density, medium density to high density or high density into low medium? What, what exactly is it that we want to do? And going forward, how does that affect the, the population within that community? Yes, super, super. So you're saying let's enlighten more people. Absolutely. Exercise their rights. Absolutely. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you yeah. very much oh, for coming on to the show. Yeah. Brilliant. Now we're going to hear from the president of the KPF and hear a little bit about what he's doing in contribution to unscrupulous developers. Stay tuned. Brilliant, brilliant. Now to ensure that one foot is not on the banana peel all the way to the grave, we've got the chair, I believe, of KPF. Yes. Welcome to Property Focus. Thank you. Very good, very good. Briefly introduce yourself to the viewers. Hello everyone, mm -hmm. my name is Daniel Nyakora. Mm -hmm. I am the chairperson of the Kilimani Project Foundation. So, Daniel, tell us, what is the objective of KPF then? So, KPF was founded about a decade ago. Yes. Uh, the objective of it was to uh, bring the neighbours together, mm -hmm. neighbours who are concerned about uh, how the neighbourhood is developing, right? You know, in Nairobi, mm -hmm. uh, most people don't have a lot of ownership of their neighbourhoods, yes. but the people who are brought up here, uh, and they live here, they came together and they wanted to mind the business of uh, how Kilimani is growing. Yes. But the most important reason why it was founded was to create a community, mm -hmm. to create that camaraderie and that neighborhoodliness. Mm -hmm. um, but then it evolved into um, you know, a society where people come together to mind what's coming up next door, you know, how are we managing our green cover yes. um, and other societal issues that come up uh, mm -hmm. around a neighborhood. Mm -hmm. How are you tackling green cover, for instance? Now, interesting fact, mm -hmm. um, Kilimani has lost 50% of its tree cover in the, in the past five years, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That is 
a, it's a deplorable state of mm -hmm. affairs, mm -hmm. right? Um, but this came because of some sort of zoning relaxation. We don't know whether it was legal or not, whether it was gazetted or not. Yes. But this zoning review mm -hmm. brought a lot of high-rise development into Kilimani. It changed Kilimani from a residential area into sort of mixed-use, uh, commercial, and residential area. Okay. And that has brought a lot of irregular developments. Mm -hmm. It's brought a lot, of, a lot of businesses around Kilimani, a lot of clubs. Mm -hmm. Um, and people, when they are building, right, they cut down tree cover. But to the, um, to, the, uh, to the credit of Kilimani people, we have always been planting trees. Mm -hmm. But at that rate of development and at that rate of disruption, it's very, very difficult to, uh, to catch up um, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the loss of tree cover. Mm -hmm. So these constructions are actually that many? There are many. There are many. In fact, uh, we have ha we've had um, you know, a public participation. You know, in Kilimani, we do have whatever... Uh, there's a change of use advertisement. Yes. The residents who live around that area, mm -hmm. they meet and they assess um, the environmental impact of the building, who is coming here, what, what are they trying to do, how will that affect the community. So we had one about mm -hmm. uh, three weeks ago, okay. um, and we had a representative from the county who, uh, when, he, when he just listed the number of developments that are coming, yes. it was outrageous. And the county does not even know, if you ask them today, yes. how many developments have you approved for Kilimani? They have no idea. Mm -hmm. So there are many. They are increasing. They are, they are incredibly many, and many of them are very fishy business people because they try to hide the advertisements. They try not to put the um, um, the notices on their gates, mm -hmm. uh, just to try and skirt, you know, the regulation mm -hmm. um, before they build. Yes. And so sometimes you just wake up in the morning, you find a, yeah. a bulldozers in your next door, yes. uh, you know, trying to trying to excavate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. So we've got a couple of members in the Kilimani Project Foundation. Yeah. How many are they? How can we prompt people to just join the association? Yeah, so Kilimani, um, we have Kilimanians, mm -hmm. the ones who live, work, and play in mm -hmm. Kilimani, right? Mm -hmm. These are people who we have direct reach. Mm -hmm. um, there are about 3,000 members, right? Um, I think more right now, 3,800 thereabout. Mm -hmm. Then we have those who are paying members yes. because Kilimani uh, Project Foundation is also an association. Right, where you have a membership subscription. We have about 400 of those okay. who are paid members. Okay. Um, this is it paid yearly, this is a monthly? It's a, month, it's a yearly subscription. How much is it? It's about 2,400. Mm -hmm. uh, we try to think of it as a coffee. Okay. Um, you know, you, you buy a coffee a month yes. uh, just for the work of the secretariat, the work of uh, the people who are employed by Kilimani, who are not many. We have actually only two mm -hmm. employees. Everybody else who works on Kilimani yes. is completely on a volunteer basis. Mm -hmm. So how can somebody join today? So to join the Kilimani Project Foundation, uh, you have to go to our website, kilimani.org. Um, there's a membership portal um, where you subscribe online. So once you subscribe, you fill in your details where, you know, your, your, um, what you want to do, what, I mean, your interests in Kilimani, and then you pay the subscription fee, um, which would go directly into a bank account. From there, you'll get a call back from our secretariat who will then introduce you to the membership they will, in, they will add you to our WhatsApp groups and they will guide you through all the activities that you're interested in that you can join and participate. And I think the hot issue right now is uh, planned development. If you have an irregular development that's coming next to you, you have water issues, you have noise pollution issues, there are clubs that are disturbing you, best thing to do is to visit kilimani.org um, and you just follow the steps and subscribe. If you are unsure, just call the number on the page uh, and our able secretariat will be able to guide you on how you can join the foundation. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Glad to have had you. Thank Brilliant. you. Brilliant. <laughs> that was Daniel. And you've just gotten to see a stellar example of just how these associations uh, organize themselves and the objectives that they're carrying out. You too can join as you've got the website. It's www.kilimani.org. Okay. Brilliant. This is Peter Ngigi. This has been Property Focus. Thank you for keeping it here. Sit next week, same place, same time. Goodbye. <music>